guys, welcome and welcome back to Sissy Spaces. Thanks for joining me today and I hope you had a wonderful Christmas and was able to share it with those you love. Since 2023 is coming to an end, I thought it'd be fun to take a look back at some of my favorite videos from this past year. So I've compiled several of them into one long cleaning marathon that you could put up on your TV, tablet, or phone and do whatever tasks or chores you need to get done today while bringing me along as a friend to clean with you. What's great about this Clean With Me Marathon is that you don't have to stop what you're doing to change the channel. You just have that consistent cleaning, cooking, decluttering, organizing, and laundry motivation with lots of decorating ideas and grocery hauls. I've also included some of my cleaning and organizing tips and routines to help you end the year with a clean and tidy home. And you have everything you need in this one video to start the new year off right. I hope you really enjoy this one and it motivates and inspires you to do all the things you need to get done today. I also hope by cleaning together, cleaning becomes a little more enjoyable as it has for me. And as always, at the end of the video, if you're new to my channel, please hit that like and subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends. And if you've already subscribed, welcome back and please continue to hit that like button. And thanks for your support. I continue to do what I do because of you. So without further ado, let's get this end of year clean with me marathon started. guys, welcome and welcome back to Sissy Spaces. Today's video is a home reset. I'm getting my home back in order after having some much needed repairs and painting done over the last two weeks. In last week's video, we cleaned, organized, and did a little bit of decorating in our home office, dining room, half bath, guest room, and my youngest son's bedroom and bathroom. By the way, correction from last week's video. The painting crew is from KP Painting, and I'll link their website in my description box just in case you need some painting done and you live in the great Atlanta, Georgia area. Also, this is not a sponsored video. I paid for their services and it was worth every penny. In today's video, we're doing a lot of cleaning, organizing, and a little bit of decorating in the remaining rooms of my home. So sit back, relax, or clean along with me. And as always, if you enjoyed today's video, at the end of the video, Please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends. On this day, the crew of KP Painting was about 95% done. They still need to finish painting the fireplace around, accent walls in the kitchen and laundry room, the downstairs on the suite walk-in closet and garage, so you may notice some areas have imperfections. As of today, though, my favorite painting crew is done and we've said our goodbyes. I don't know if I should be happy that I have my house back or sad that they're gone. Wyman Granite and Stone Cleaner on these ceramic tiles. I like using this brand of granite cleaner because it cleans, shines, and disinfects all at once. It may seem redundant, but I'm sweeping and vacuuming today, similar to what I did in last week's video. There are a lot of paint chips on the floor, so I want to make sure I sweep them up to prevent them from clogging my vacuum. Thank you. 
I'm using the YMS Leather Conditioning Wipes on this leather chair. It does a great job of protecting this chair from sun damage, fading, drying, and cracking, considering this chair sits by the window all the time. I plan to decorate this side table today as well as the table off the foyer with my daily decor. I'm keeping it simple because I'm starting my Christmas clean and decorate series next week, so it's only going to be up a few days. Max is watching me like a hawk. He's aware of where the furniture goes and is so happy things are getting back to normal. I think he's just as happy as I am. This is where the second table is located that I'll be decorating today, and again, I'm keeping it simple. I'm also not placing stems in the vases, considering I've already stored the stems away, and I plan to place holiday stems in the vases next week. I now see why Max is anxious. His toy box has been hidden away for the past two weeks and he spotted it as I was cleaning. Let's put this in its original spot next before I do anything else today. I'm only vacuuming the sofa today. I want to remove as much dirt, dust, and hair as possible before I place the covers in the washer. I'm going to do a quick vacuum today because they still need to paint the fireplace around, so the rug will need another vacuum after that. As you can see, this vacuum is pretty full, and that's just from the sofa and rug. I finally purchased the stain for this tray, and I'll try to sand and apply it in a few weeks. These are the items I will be using to decorate the two side tables. The wreath is a return and the blinds will replace the broken blinds located behind the eat-in table. I'm 
I'm excited to start decorating for Christmas next week. These large vases and lamps, I'm gonna use them again because they're my anchor pieces. After watching this back, I noticed I used one of my summer art pieces versus my new fall art piece I recently purchased. And I really wanted you guys to see it. The boys had already loaded the dishwasher for me, so I only had the plates and bowls used by me and hubby early this morning to load in the dishwasher. After cleaning this window, I want to wipe down my fridge. I'm purchasing groceries later this evening and need to make a list. Before purchasing groceries, I always make a list of items needed and wipe down the fridge. This has saved me a lot of time and money. I only wipe the crisper drawers down once a month because I keep storage containers in there and the food sits in the containers versus the drawers themselves. Wiping down these lanterns, I wanted to place them back on the stairs, but Marshall was still painting while John was spotting him for safety reasons. Marshall did an excellent job on these stairs. They look brand new. And I figured when they were done, I would use their ladder to clean this light that hangs above the foyer and then dust off and vacuum these stairs. As you can see, these stairs were pretty dirty, but by using a swifter, it made the job much easier. I'm using the same cleaner on these counters as I've used on the ceramic tile of the fireplace. It's called the Wyman's Granite and Stone Cleaner, but you can use it on tile, marble, limestone, and slate. While wiping down these counters, I was thinking of what to cook for dinner. I decided on spaghetti. I use ground turkey and sausage in my spaghetti. By adding the sausage, it gives it an additional flavor. Nathan and Randy were hard at work painting our downstairs owner suite and once they were done, I immediately began cleaning. I forgot to remove our sheets before they cover the bed, so I wanna place them in the washer right away.
I finished one load early this morning so I wouldn't be in the way once they started painting the laundry room, but I was given the okay to start a second load because the laundry room is one of the last rooms on their list. We change our sheets every Friday and I always wash the dirty ones the same day, which means we always have a clean set of sheets on hand. This system came in handy today. I added an additional debate insert to our bed last night. It was in the 40s in Atlanta and it'll be in the 30s the remainder of the week. What's your weather like where you're from? Leave it in the comments. I would love to hear from you and I always respond. Now that all the painting has been completed and most of the furniture is in its original place, I along with the rest of the family are beginning to relax. This has been a long two weeks, but I would do it again if I can guarantee the same result. Our robot's been working overtime over the last two weeks. This weekend, I plan to deep clean and replace the brush heads. As you can see, I'm only going to dust and use Clorox wipes to clean the bathroom today. I plan to deep clean it tomorrow. It's getting late and I still need to clean behind the washer and dryer and cook. You may have also noticed that I'm missing my mirror. The anchor that held the mirror on the wall was hanging out of the wall, so we decided to remove it and have the plans to rehang it this week. Christmas decorating series next week. Does anyone else decorate before Thanksgiving? You'll notice there's painter's tape still on this vanity light. It's been removed since I recorded this video. Again, the crew was about 95% completed on the day of recording. We did a final walkthrough yesterday and everything has been finished.
again, I'm only using Clorox wipes to clean the bathroom today. My goal is to get it back in working order and then deep clean it later. these towels I need to sweep and vacuum. We're not cleaning the walk-in closet today because they're currently painting it. John, the project manager, suggested I clean behind the washer and dryer before Nathan painted, and I'm glad he did because it was filthy. I figured it would be a good idea to wipe down the appliances as well. I didn't think behind the washer would be any worse than the dryer, but I was wrong. Clorox wipes did a great job of removing this gunk off the ceramic tiles and the baseboards. Once the laundry room was clean, I started dinner and didn't finish the remaining rooms. I decided to leave them as clips. On the day I started this video, some were still a work in progress like the laundry room itself and others were completed and cleaned by my son. I promise to show you the unfinished rooms, final results in upcoming videos. If you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you for watching Sissy Spaces. And as always, if you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.
Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to Sissy Spaces. Today's video is a cook and clean with me. I want to try this new recipe I found online and I also need to clean my bedroom, bathroom, and walk-in closet. I was online looking for Christmas decor and stumbled across this recipe. It's called Mom Sausage Roll and it only has three ingredients and a quick prep time. I also want to make my traditional breakfast items with old-fashioned chicken flavored grits and cheesy scrambled eggs in case someone in the family doesn't like the sausage roll. So we'll get the grits started first and then we'll make the sausage roll. calls for two pounds of pork sausage. So I'm gonna use this Tennessee Pride Mild Country Sausage that I purchased at Walmart. I think the hardest part of this recipe was opening the sausage. I noticed my water was boiling for the grits, so I wanna give this sausage a quick smash and then stir my grits into the boiling water. The key to cooking old-fashioned grits is patience. It requires a lot of stirring on low heat and the right ratio of grits to water. My ratio is eight cups of water to two cups of grits. The sausage is cooked pretty quickly, so here I am wiping out the frying pan I cooked it in, and I've placed the sausage in a storage container and set aside until the oven is done preheating to 350 degrees. I also want to gather my supplies for the cheesy scrambled eggs. I'm going to prep the scrambled eggs and refrigerate them until my sausage roll is in the oven. using the silk almond milk instead of regular milk. It has calcium and vitamin E in it, and it's easier on my stomach because it's free from dairy, gluten, and artificial colors and flavors. It took some time getting used to after drinking whole milk all these years, but it's all I drink now. I know it seems overkill to use cracked pepper and ground pepper, but there is a difference. The cracked pepper adds texture to your food while the ground offers no texture at all. Also, the cracked pepper is more potent and which, in my opinion, enhances the taste of the food. I had to take another look at the recipe. I forgot it needed scrambled eggs as well as some beaten egg mixture to brush over the dough before placing in the oven. using a lot of cookware when cooking because that's more items to clean when I'm done. 
but I needed a frying pan for the sausage, another frying pan for the plain scrambled eggs that's included in the recipe, and a third frying pan for my cheesy scrambled eggs. The sausages are done as well as the scrambled eggs. The next recipe item is the dough, but first I need to prep my baking dish. I like using parchment paper when baking because it makes cleanup a breeze. Also, parchment paper is easy to use because it's not sticky and it's resistant to grease and humidity. I'm using the Pillsbury Refrigerated Pizza Crust. It's easy to use because you just unroll it on the parchment paper, add your toppings, and bake. But this recipe also asks that you brush your rolled dough with beaten egg mixture or egg wash. By doing this, your dough will have a gold color and gloss after baking. As you can see, I like adding my dishes straight from the cooktop to the sink. This would allow it to soak, making it easier to clean later. I also want to place the grits in a storage dish so the pot can soak as well. Now that the sausage roll is in the oven and my grits are done, I can get started on the cheesy scrambled eggs. I also want to keep an eye on my sausage roll to ensure it doesn't burn. done except the sausage roll. The recipe asks that you bake the sausage roll between 30 to 45 minutes. I baked it at first for 30 minutes but returned it to the oven for an additional 10 because the dough was soft to the touch. Once the dough was stiff to the touch at the 10 minute mark, I removed it. The ends of the sausage roll didn't have much cheese, sausage, and eggs, so I wouldn't recommend eating that piece first. It tasted like a lot of dough, but once I tried a centerpiece, it was delicious. The combination of sausage, eggs, and cheese made a great breakfast burrito, and the family loved it so much they asked that I bake it next time using burrito shells versus the dough. a cup of coffee and a pastry it was time to tackle the mess. I wouldn't usually show you my messes but when trying new recipes I always make more of a mess than usual. I know it doesn't seem like much but if you've been with my channel for a while you know this is not typical of me. The dishes that are already in the dishwasher are from last night. It wasn't a full load, so I didn't start it. When loading my dishwasher, I tried to place my cookware in it, but when it's something as small as this pot, I don't mind. 
The cookware I just used today though will be washed and dried by hand. habit of placing a cascade pot in the dishwasher even if we don't turn it on. This lets everyone know in the household that the dishes in the dishwasher are dirty. I always forget like I did today. As you can see, this cookie pan is not dirty at all because I used the parchment paper. I still wash it before putting it away though, just in case there's food residue on it from the oven. always refreshing to clean my sink. This lets me know the only tasks left to finish cleaning the kitchen are wiping down the appliances, counters, eat-in table, vacuuming, and mopping if needed. knife away I remember that I need to sharpen it as well as the others I have. If you don't have a knife sharpener you can use the unglazed rim around the bottom of your ceramic plates, bowls, and cups but be careful though. After cutting my hand while doing this my husband purchased a steel sharpener. a lot of dish towels in our home because we always have to dry the floors after doing the dishes. We have laminate floors so it's important to wipe up any water found because the standing water can cause the floors to bubble up and swell and it can also separate the seams or fade the floor's color. I'm using Clorox wipes to clean my counters and cooktop today. I like using these after cooking because it speeds up the process of cleaning and disinfecting surfaces because you don't need any preparation before using them. Now that my cooktop is clean, I want to disinfect my countertops. Clorox wipes work great as a disinfectant because you can use them in many different areas of your home. But I advise you to check the manufacturer's guidelines when using them on doorknobs, cabinet pools, and faucets. I left a scratch on this table and I'm trying to match the color stain before buffing it out. I have a hard time matching stain colors. I'm still looking for a stain for the breakfast tray that's located on the ottoman in the family room. I'm gonna vacuum the floors in the kitchen today because I mopped them last week. I also wanna finish up in here so I can clean my bedroom, bathroom, and walk-in closet.
This hot traffic area always stays dirty because it leads to the back patio. I wanted to use rug tape to keep this rug in place, but I remove it twice a day to shake and vacuum, so there's no point. Before cleaning my bedroom, I want to spray my vinegar water dawn solution in the sinks, shower, and toilet first to give it time to work. Most cleaning products require time to sit in order for it to be effective. This solution is no different. We're having work done in our home, so we've had to rise a little earlier than usual. As such, my cleaning routine changed. This morning, instead of making my bed, I decided to go ahead and cook breakfast first. I'll resume my normal cleaning routine next week once all the repairs are done. While I'm doing these voiceovers, hubby is grilling chicken for dinner. This past week, we celebrated 32 years of marriage, which to me has flown by. We celebrated by hanging around the house and relaxing, something I thoroughly enjoyed. We were married after only knowing each other for three weeks. We are true soulmates and we knew it the moment we met. Now that it's getting cooler in the evening, so I'm going to add a second duvet insert to our bed. I add it between the flat sheet and the coverlet, similar to what you'll see in the hotel rooms. Our downstairs gets a lot cooler during the winter nights because the heat rises. So to keep our gas bill low, I add an additional duvet insert to our bed. This is a heavy duvet insert, but I'm still going to add that additional insert next week. Believe it or not, South Atlanta gets pretty cold at night, and starting next week, it'll be in the 30s. I want to dust our blinds today because our house has been pretty dusty since the start of repairs. I'll wipe them clean with a wet microfiber cloth once all the repairs in the home have been completed. I want to use the spray away glass cleaner on the glass of my fireplace. I would normally wipe it with a wet microfiber cloth, but when I turned on the fireplace last night, there were tons of streaks. I figured since it's safe to use on my wall art and mirrors, it would do just fine on the glass of the fireplace. Dust the entire fireplace first before applying this railway glass cleaner to the face of the fireplace. Before I apply any wet products to my surfaces, I always dry wipe it first. You may not see me do it every time, but it's done. When I first
first cleaned the glass of this on more, I was nervous that I would ruin the wood surrounding the glass because you should never use glass cleaner on wood, but it hasn't damaged it at all. But I still don't recommend using glass cleaner on wood. regular ceramic solid bowl. I use it to store keys and remotes in it sometimes and during the holidays I place pine cones in here. I say all that to say you don't have to purchase special bowls as decor. Use your favorite dishes instead. I got a little carried away with the spray away glass cleaner. I like the clean fresh scent it leaves behind, so sometimes I spray just a little too much. ceramic towel surrounded in a tub. I don't spray anything on it, but use the same microfiber cloth that I use to clean the window. We rarely use this tub, so I'm mainly wiping away dust. I've already sprayed the inside of the sink, so I only need to spray the vinegar, water, and Dawn solution on the faucet. Also, on Prime Day, I ordered a ceramic tile attachment to this Rubbermaid scrubber, and I'll show it to you when I clean the ceramic tile in the shower. these drawers restained or painted. I accidentally spilled face wash and it splashed on these drawers. When I wiped it off, some of the stain came off as well. I stopped using that face wash after that happened because I figured if it could remove stain, I may not want to put it on my face. Also, I finally replaced the stems with these burgundy stems from Hobby Lobby. I usually don't purchase colorful stems for my home, but I couldn't pass up the price. They were 75% off at the time of purchase. Again, I purchased the burgundy stems from Hobby Lobby as well as the tray. The black face is from Walmart and the lidded dish and cloture from Anthropology. Along with the angle brush head on this drill, I'm going to also use the new ceramic tile brush attachment to my Rubbermaid scrubber. I noticed I had some spots I couldn't get to with the drill attachment brush head, but this scrubber was able to fit in that small spot and remove the crud that was there. As you can see, I sprayed a lot of spray away glass cleaner on my shower doors, but prior to that, I had already sprayed my vinegar, water, and Dawn solution on the glass, and it sat for at least 10 minutes before adding the spray away glass cleaner. I found this combo works wonders on water spots, but to prevent water spots from the beginning, you need to dry all the water off the glass before the water evaporates. I 
Spranks Railway glass cleaner on the exterior of my doors. I didn't add my vinegar mixture because the exterior of my glass doors doesn't have water spots. this spray attachment to rinse off all the solution. They have something similar on faucets now, but I refuse to purchase new faucets when these work just fine. Again, I'm using my vinegar mixture on the hubby's side of our bathroom as well as my Rubbermaid scrubber. His vanity is much smaller than mine, so this is always an easier and quicker clean. Wiping down these items and organizing them, we're done. Again, his vanity is always the easiest to clean in this bathroom. We're now in the toilet room and I want to wipe down this small art piece above the toilet. I like placing art in my toilet room just to give it a little something. Also one of you asked me what's my least favorite area to clean and of course it's the toilet. It's not that much work, it's just gross but somebody has to do it. Whenever I clean my toilets, I also wipe down the toilet brush and plunger containers. By doing this every time, it prevents odor and bacteria from spreading. Also, I would love to use the disposable cleaners, but we have a septic system, so it's not recommended. I recently purchased the lavender scented wet mopping cloths. It has a pleasant scent, but the original scent is my favorite. you guys this before but I like using these swifter wet pads versus my steamer because it's less bulky and it has minimal maintenance as you can see when you're done with these wet pads you just throw them in the trash also I need to take out my trash because it's pretty full I've kept the door to the closet closed while the work is being done in my home, so it's not that bad. But I still want to hit the areas of dust that I do see, clean my mirror, and vacuum. If you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you for watching Sissy's Faces. And if you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.
guys, welcome or welcome back to Sissy Spaces. Today's video is all about the cleaning habits and routines I use in order to maintain a clean and tidy home, and it starts right here in the bedroom. Although it may seem like it on video, I actually don't make my bed right away when I wake up. I allow it to air out while getting dressed. You see, if you make your bed right away when you wake up, you trap that moisture in the sheets, which allow dust mites to grow. I also shake my sheets as I make my bed. This removes dead skin cells and other debris from your sheets. Because pillows flatten over time, I fluff them every day. What this does is breaks up any pieces inside the pillow, which allows the air to enter, and it increases the pillow's volume. Every day, I open the windows in one room of my home for at least 20 minutes. This improves indoor air quality by circulating the air in your home, and it pushes out air pollutants. As you can see, the dishwasher is full today. I only run my dishwasher when it's full. If you run your dishwasher half empty, it wastes energy and puts more wear and tear on the appliance. You also don't want to overload it because this will cause some dishes not to get cleaned and chip or break. And if your dishes are dripping when you remove them, you either forgot to turn on the heating cycle or your low on rinse agent, which helps improve the dishwasher drying performance and reduces water spots on the dishes. that everything in your home has a place and every member of your home knows where that place is. As a military family, we moved around a lot. And with each new move, every family member was made aware of where things go. If you're the person who does most, if not all, of the cleaning, inform your family members of where things are. They get just as frustrated as you do when they can't find anything. By keeping everyone informed, this reduces stress within the home, less wasted time looking for items, and it saves money because you no longer purchase items you don't have space for. By the way, if you have any cleaning habits or routines you would like to share, please do so. I love reading the comments and I always respond. I always pre-rinse or wash my dishes before loading them in the dishwasher. This guarantees you never have a clogged filter basket. And by not at least rinsing your dishes, you may eventually end up with a clogged drain hose. or another family member load the dishwasher after every meal and add dish detergent, whether we're running a cycle or not. This informs the rest of the family that the dishes in the dishwasher are dirty. After the dishes are done, I always wipe down the countertops. I read that the kitchen and bathroom countertops are the most used surfaces in your home, and wiping them down frequently prevents the growth of bacteria. Also, wiping the kitchen countertops down daily reduces your chance of getting rodents.
I clean as I cook so I don't have as much mess waiting for me later. Also while cooking, I use a Clorox wipe to tackle those cooked on stains. So I only need to use a damp microfiber cloth to wipe it down later. Today I'm polishing the exterior of my oven using a Wyman stainless steel cleaner and I'm also cleaning the inside of my oven and I found the easiest way to keep the interior of my oven clean is by wiping it down after every use. Once a month though, I spray the interior with Dawn Platinum Power Wash this spray and I let it sit overnight. I then wipe it down with a bowl of warm water and a heavy duty scotch Bright sponge. By the way, if you have granite countertops, you need to reseal them every year. I do this at the end of each year using the granite gold sealer. Last year I had to order it off of the Walmart website because they no longer sold it in stores. But you can also find it at Home Depot and Lowe's. Stainless steel refrigerator with a mixture of equal parts water and white vinegar is my go-to, but you have to ensure you completely remove the white vinegar residue and buff and polish it with olive oil. Lately, I've found a quicker way and that's by using the Wyman stainless steel cleaner because it requires a lot less effort. To reduce allergens and keep the dust at a minimum, I vacuum and dust the high traffic areas daily and I also use my iRobot to assist. this throw every night so every morning I remove it and shake it. I also wash this throw weekly on the sanitize cycle. lay on these throw pillows but I still shake and vacuum them daily. This keeps them fluffier and fresher longer. Whenever I vacuum the sofa I treat all stains as soon as possible. This keeps the stain from settling in which makes it harder to remove later. vacuum this rug daily. This prolongs the life of this rug because it removes the soil and dirt that can damage the carpet fiber. We use 
this wood table daily and to keep it clean i wipe it down with pledge lemon scented furniture polish and then every three to six months i treat it with the old english wood oil this is where we keep the family calendar it has saved us valuable time and money because it keeps the family informed and on the same page not only does it track our upcoming appointments, but I keep the grocery list here. And the motto in my family is, if it's not on the grocery list, it doesn't get purchased. If you're new to my channel, my goal this year was to wipe down all the walls and doors of my home. The remaining rooms to get done is the guest room, hobby room, and the kitchen, but today we're going to wipe that kitchen off the list. I'm using the Zep Foaming Wall Cleaner, a Swifter Wet Dry Mop, and a white microfiber cloth. A laundry schedule in my house and today is towel day by having a laundry schedule it saves me time and energy i always load laundry first thing in the morning while i clean and throughout the day i fold and put them away by having a laundry schedule the family is aware of what would be washed on certain days and then they don't need to worry about whether or not certain clothing will be washed and ready when they need them before today is towel wash day and that includes the towels and throws used by my fur baby max i sanitize his towels and throws weekly by washing them in hot soapy water and i dry them on the antibacterial cycle this helps kills the parasites like fleas and reduces bacterial growth exterior doors monthly with spray away on the glass and warm soapy water on the rest of the door. Today I'm going to use Zep Foam and Wall Cleaner to see how it performs. The doors I clean today are made of fiberglass so I'm not too worried about what I use on them but I'm very careful when cleaning my front door because it's made of wood. It's important that you clean your doors because it is the first thing your guests see when they arrive and it's also a high traffic area. <laughs> windows in my bedroom because it's been over 20 minutes since I aired it out. Max's towels throwing crate covers are dry and as I pull them from the dryer I shake them to remove any remaining dog hair. To conserve energy and water I include the rugs leading to the exterior of my home in this load and I fold Max's items in the laundry room. I don't want to fold them on the ironing board because I'm afraid any dog hair may remain on them. Whenever I dry Max's items and remove the lint trap, tons of dog hair falls from the dryer. I do shake his towel throwing crate cover outside before loading them in the washer, but I always get the same result. Because of this, I clean the lint trap thoroughly using the vacuum and lint trap cleaner brush. And I purchased this lint trap brush from Amazon and will have it linked in my description box in case you're interested. Before I 
after you clean this half bath, I want to spray on the cleaning agent and give it time to work. And while waiting, I'm going to remove this last load from the washer and place her in the dryer. I'm then going to wipe down the door of the washer, the rubber gasket around the ring of the tub, and the soap dispenser. You should do this after your last load of laundry, regardless of whether or not you have a front loader or a top loader, because this prevents a buildup of mold. I deep clean one room in my home a week and today it's the half bath. Because the half bath is much smaller than the other rooms, I added the walls in the kitchen to my weekly deep cleaning schedule. This home has three full and one half bath, so I only clean one bathroom per week. The boys clean their own bathrooms weekly, so the half bath and the owner suite bath gets cleaned every two weeks. But I do wipe down the sinks and the toilet weekly, and the rest of the bathroom is cleaned every two weeks. Whenever I wipe down the toilet, I use a facial tissue first to wipe it and then I follow it up with a Clorox wipe. I clean the outside of the toilet first, starting from the top down before cleaning the toilet bowl. To clean the toilet bowl, as you saw earlier, I coat the toilet bowl well, the entire interior, and then I start underneath the bowl's rim and I always end with a flush. the last load from the dryer, I vacuum my laundry room floors weekly and I mop them monthly. I also keep the brooms and mops stored behind the door on a coat rack. This keeps them out of sight but also within reach when needed. A vacuum canister at the end of the day after each use. If you wait for it to be completely full, the vacuum suction power will decrease, and by emptying it frequently, you toss out those potential germs and bacteria before they can take hold in your vacuum. Weekly, I remove the chairs and table in the kitchen eating area and vacuum. The iRobot does a good job of cleaning around the tables and chairs, but to prevent rodents, I vacuum under it weekly nevertheless. and pull away my clothes daily. This reduces the amount of wrinkles and creases in your laundry and by folding or rolling your clothes, it takes up less space. However, rolling clothes is time consuming, so I only do this when packing for vacation. Also, the clothes that are worn outside the home are hung in the closet. This helps maintain a wrinkle-free finish and preserves the creases in the pants and draping of the tops and dresses. our daily wear in this glass storage cabinet which is really a dining room storage cabinet and I organize them by color and size. This makes it easier to pick out our clothes, see what we have and identify what we need. This 
closet was configured to allow equal space for hanging and shelf storage. This makes it easier to keep it organized and group like items together. If you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you for watching Sissy Spaces. And as always, if you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. guys welcome or welcome back to sissy spaces in today's video we're deep cleaning and deodorizing several rooms in my home so if this is something you're interested in continue watching and at the end of the video please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends Starting our deodorizing in my oldest son's room, to deodorize in bedrooms, I start with the bed. I wash the sheets with vinegar and borax and I also wipe down the windows, furniture, and the floors. This eliminates any odor every time. All of the beds in my home have mattress protectors. Now, only does a mattress protector prevent dirt and moisture from staining and degrading your mattress. It's also the easiest way to eliminate odors. Instead of shampooing your mattress, just throw your mattress protector in the washer. I also eliminate odors in my home by cleaning the windows and the blinds. A simple gap or incorrect layering could allow moisture to enter the wall cavity around the windows and mold to develop. So I use vinegar to penetrate the mold and I caulk around the windows. I also wipe down my window moldings and blinds often. My son finally fixed the motor on the left twin adjustable bed. I raised the head of the bed to a comfortable height to prevent back strain and I lower it once I place the linens on it to ensure the linens are tight fitting and wrinkle free. Every Friday, I wash all the linens in my home, including the pillow protectors and the throws. Today, I need to also wash my youngest son's mattress protector because he always forgets to bring it down with his sheets.
I placed my oldest son's towels in the washer earlier this morning, and now that they're done, I can put them in the dryer and load my youngest son's mattress protector in the washer. Again, I like using borax with vinegar and my gain detergents to clean and deodorize my whites. cotton pillow protectors which makes it difficult to add pillowcases. My youngest son has satin pillow protectors and it is a lot easier to place the pillowcases on them. Wood is a porous material and that means it tends to hold on to absorb and emit odors. So along with washing sheets and cleaning windows and blinds, I also deodorize my furniture by wiping it down. I like using a lemon scented pledge, which leaves a shine and a fresh lemony scent behind. Whenever I clean my windows, I always forget to dust the grip group, which is a haven for dust. As you can see, I'm running low on my pledge, but I definitely placed it on the grocery list for tomorrow. My son uses this metal end table as a chair when playing his games. I'm on the lookout for an upholster in a bed bench to replace this. If you have any suggestions, please leave a comment. the jingle on the washer or dryer, but it was a false alarm. Once I'm done in his closet and bedroom, I can deep clean and deodorize the bathroom. You would think the bathroom is where most of your odors are coming from, but it's not. Actually, it's your garbage in the kitchen that tops the list. Whenever I wash bulky loads of laundry, I add an additional drain and spin cycle. This helps remove as much water as possible from that load, which reduces drying time. microfiber cloths when cleaning. You see, microfiber cloths are different than regular washcloths because they have these tiny fibers that pick up dirt and dust better than regular washcloths. But not all microfiber cloths are created equal, so check the fine print before purchasing. I like 
and spray away glass cleaner on all my mirrors because it's ammonia free. It dries quickly and it's a deodorizer because it leaves a clean fresh scent behind. When cleaning your sink, remember to clean the inside rim of the sink. You wouldn't believe the amount of gunk that gets trapped in that area. Today I want to pay special attention to the towel surrounding the tub because I haven't cleaned it in a while. Whenever I clean the tub, I always seem to pay more attention to the inside of the tub. I'm not sure what this is trapped inside this toothbrush holder, but whatever it is, it's gotta go. the vanity cabinets whenever I clean the bathroom but you should also wipe them down if you have a lot of moisture in your bathroom. Removing the moisture prevents mold and mildew from growing. I finally received the flat attachment from Amazon for this drill. I used the yellow flat attachment for the walls of the shower and the blue is for the crevices and the corners. And after each use, I plug in the drill to charge. In between wiping the spray away glass cleaner off the shower doors, I rinse the microfiber cloths. This helps in removing any excess products from the shower door. My youngest son's mattress protector is done washing, which means I can now wash my oldest son's second set of sheets. Because this is going to be a large load, I'm going to wash it on the bulky large cycle, drain, and spin it twice. Along with the interior, I'm going to wipe down the exterior of the shower doors. I only use spray away glass cleaner on the exterior of my shower doors because the hard water stains are only on the interior of the doors. Turning the items to the shower and hanging clean towels. I want to clean and deodorize the toilet room. I also want to deep clean and disinfect his toilet brush and plunger.
said it before, but it's worth repeating. When cleaning the toilet, remember to open and clean the bolt covers. It's the most neglected part of the toilet when cleaning. Whenever I'm done cleaning the toilet bowl, I lay the brush on the edge of the toilet to air dry. The container which holds the brush has air pockets built in, which also allows the brush to air dry. the cancer of my robot after each use and wipe it down. This not only extends the life of my vacuum but also eliminates odor because you're not allowing those things trapped in the canister to sit. I save all my shopping bags and place them in these used tissue boxes and I also place a tissue box in each bathroom. This makes it very convenient to replace your trash bag when needed. After opening this vanity cabinet several times today, I realized it needs to be cleaned and organized. This was not on my list today, but it must be done. Since I cleaned and organized the other cabinet, I might as well do this one as well. I heard the LG jingle, so that means my oldest son's second set of sheets are done. I decided to check my youngest son's mattress protector to see if it was dry, but it wasn't. So I cleaned the lint trap and placed the dryer on bulky high heat to dry quickly. I also set the washer on drain and span to remove any excess water from the bulky load of sheets I placed in there earlier. And since I had cleaned the cabinets of the vanity, I figured I might as well do the same for the drawers. <laughs> While I was cleaning my oldest son's vanity drawers, I realized he's done a good job of keeping it organized. But he definitely hasn't wiped it down though, so it's a good thing I decided to do it. Third drawers were not as dirty, but they were also not as organized either.
his vanity is cleaned and organized, we can finish cleaning the bathroom by mopping his floor. I'm using the Swifter Wet Pass because it's easy to use, store, and it deodorizes by leaving a clean, fresh scent behind. house goal this year was to wash all the doors and walls in my home. I'm happy to announce once I'm done washing the walls and doors in this room, which is the guest room, my goal will be complete. What should my house goal be for next year? My youngest son's mattress pad is dry, so now I can load my oldest son's sheets in the dryer. Since this is my last load of the day, I want to dry the washer door, rubber gasket of the drum, and soap dispenser. I also want to place this mattress pad back on my youngest son's bed before it gets too late. I was asked by a relative how I stay so slim, and this is how, climbing these stairs multiple times a day. I do apologize for the flickering lights. I accidentally recorded this part of the video as well as me cleaning the walls in the guest room on the slow-mo speed. And when I converted it to the normal speed, the lights flickered. If this bothers you, fast forward to the 2231 mark. I wasn't able to reach the very top of some of the walls because the ceilings are vaulted in here, but I was able to get most, if not all, of the other walls. I want to deep clean and deodorize my laundry room because it is used a lot. I'm wiping down the cabinet, shelving, and the washer and dryer with a damp microfiber cloth, and I definitely need to vacuum the pedestals located under the washer and dryer and clean the moldings and the floors. these pedestals under the washer and dryer because of the extra storage, but they're also a haven for trapping dust and dirt. I try to vacuum them out weekly, but I need to change that to daily. I also need to clean the floors along the moldings. 
It seems when I mop, the dirt gets trapped along these moldings located on the vacuum. Since I had the vacuum out, I might as well vacuum by the exit doors. vacuuming I forgot to return the rug but my youngest son took care of it for me it's late in the evening but I refuse to call it a night before folding and putting away the last load of laundry sheets first by folding them in half. I then meet up the edges and fold them inward to form a rectangle. From there I fold them in thirds until I form a square. If you made it this far in the video, I want to thank you for watching Sissy's Faces. And if you enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to Sissy Spaces. In today's video, I'm going to share with you some homemaking tips. In other words, how I manage my home. I'm also going to provide you with some cleaning motivation and hopefully inspire you to clean along with me. Before we begin though, I want to open this window to allow some fresh air to enter. Today is grocery day. I purchase groceries once per week, but before I go, I'll always wipe down the fridge with warm soapy water. While cleaning the fridge, I'm organizing the cluttering and inventorying along the way. I rarely need to throw anything away because we use what we have first before purchasing any new items. I 
organize my fridge very similar to the way I organize my home. Everything has a place and I communicate to the family where that place is. All beverages except water is kept on the two top shelves along with the eggs. My oldest son is the only lefty in the family, so we cater to his needs by placing his favorite beverages on the top left glass shelf of the fridge. We keep fruits and salads on the second glass shelves and leftovers on the bottom two shelves. organize our leftovers, keeping dinner leftovers on the left and breakfast leftovers on the right. And again, as I clean, I inventory to ensure I restock as needed. I also wipe down this rubber gasket or seal of the freezer on grocery day. If you don't keep this clean, you'll compromise the seal of your freezer and a compromised seal will not keep your food properly frozen. Now that I'm aware of what fridge and freezer items I need to purchase, I wanna clean this sink and stock my beverage center. I try to keep my beverage center fully stocked as much as possible. Our family is always on the go and I hate purchasing beverages while we're out. By keeping this full, this has saved us tons of money. I also inventory my coffee station. Now that it's starting to get cooler, I'll begin purchasing cocoa K-Cups. I routinely store my cocoa K-Cups in the back, along with my carriage rinse pods, and place my Dunkin' Donuts K-Cups in the front for daily use. This week I'm cleaning the upstairs hallway bath that's primarily used by guests and my youngest son. I like wearing these black gloves when cleaning. They have this white liner in them that keeps my hand from sweating. I purchased them from Walmart and there are two brands. The Venom brand is more expensive than the Hyper brand and I'll have them linked in my description box if you're interested. the scrubbing bubbles on the walls and floors of the shower and the vinegar mixture on the doors. If it was up to me, I would use the vinegar mixture throughout the shower, but my son doesn't like the smell of the vinegar. And yes, the smell of the vinegar can be overpowering, but it does a great job of killing mold because unlike bleach, vinegar will kill the mold at the root, but the vinegar mixture must have an acidic acid level of at least 4% in order to work. Scotch Bright sponge. I purchased them in bulk at Sam's and used them in the bathrooms and the kitchen. I like that they have a green heavy duty side which is designed to scrub or deep clean and then the yellow side is used to wipe up spills and apply the cleaning solutions. like using the soft soap liquid hand soap in the aquarium scent while my husband and I prefer the soft soap liquid hand soap in the aloe vera fresh scent. I purchased what the boys like though in order to ensure they use it. I purchased 
this Rubbermaid Reveal Cordless Battery Power Scrubber several years ago, and this one stopped working today. I logged into Amazon to purchase another one for the Amazon Prime Day, which is October the 10th and 11th, and I noticed there is a Power Scrubber Ultimate Refill Kit, which contains 15 pieces. So I placed it in the cart, and I'll let you know if it's a good choice once it arrives. I saw a fellow YouTuber use this hack in her shower, so I decided to give it a try. She poured Dawn dish detergent directly on the spot and used her power scrubber to clean it, and it worked. I also tried it on several different spots to be sure, and again, it worked. But I must have been doing too much scrubbing with this power scrubber because the head attachment of the scrubber stopped working. So while at Walmart purchasing groceries, I decided to purchase this drill and separate extender brush combo. I also ordered the flat brush assembly from Amazon. I gotta tell you, using the drill and power scrubber saved me a lot of time cleaning this shower, and I will never go back to using a sponge again. Pouring Dawn dish detergent directly in the shower worked on grimy spots, but I used a vinegar mixture on the mold located in the corner of the shower. I need to regrout that area to keep the mold from returning and will do so later this month. I had to rinse the shower longer than usual to remove all the Dawn dish detergent I used in there, but I was able to clean the shower in a short amount of time and do a better job. Spraying this shower door bottom seal gets really nasty within a week, and each week I remove it and wipe it down with a Clorox wipe. It's easy to remove and replace, but be careful not to crack it because it is fragile. I cracked the one in my oldest son's bathroom, but was able to purchase a replacement from Amazon. If you have a transom window in your shower, check it often to ensure it's properly sealed and the frame isn't covered in mold. I love that it lets in a lot of natural light and offers a way to vent the bathroom, but it does require a lot of maintenance. I spray the frame with my vinegar mixture weekly and clean the glass with spray away. We're now in the toilet room, and this is a great idea, especially if the bathroom is shared, but it is on the smaller side and can create a cramped feeling that makes some people feel uncomfortable. And because it's so small, I find it difficult to clean and film in here, but I do my best. important to clean and sanitize your plunger and toilet brush after each use. You wouldn't believe the amount of germs, bacteria, and viruses that are living and growing on them. I clean and sanitize both weekly by spraying with my vinegar mixture, and then monthly I give them and its storage containers a good scrub. If you don't have a linen closet built in, you can add your own. Any cabinets or shelves or even a coat closet will do. Because they're closed most, if not all the time, you may notice an odor. And if this occurs, give it a good clean first and then throw in some dryer sheets, perfume cotton balls, or odor absorbents to absorb or mask unwanted odors.
using these Swifter wet jet pads versus a traditional mop, it's easier to store and maintain because you can hang it anywhere and you don't have to clean it after each use. You can also use the reverse side of the pad and if you have a stubborn stain between the grout, it has this green scrubber edge. You just need to flip the mop head downward to use it. Along with deep cleaning the hallway bath, I want to deep clean the walls in the hobby slash exercise room. After cleaning these walls, I'll have one room left to accomplish my goal of cleaning all the walls in my home this year. Before I deep clean them though, I need to get this dust under control. Yes, those are Christmas wreaths. I love hanging Christmas wreaths on all the bedroom exterior doors of my home during the holidays. I found the easiest and most inexpensive way to store them and it's on the reverse side of the door itself. This has saved me a ton of time decorating because I simply moved them from the back to the front using command strips and you can find command strips anywhere. I routinely use the iRobot to clean this room, but monthly like to follow up with my Dyson vacuum. The iRobot doesn't have as much suction power as my Dyson, and if you have kids, pets, and high traffic areas, the iRobot may not be able to keep up, but I do use them every day to keep the floors dust free. My youngest son's room. I need to air this room out, dust, remake his bed and vacuum. He does a great job of maintaining his room, but once a month I like to vacuum and dust in here. Dresser, along with his nightstand and bed, get pretty dusty very quickly. We change the filter and check the sill of the window, but without fail, it continues. So every week, I dust these areas in order to keep it under control. beds within my home consist of at least six layers. The mattress pattern protector, fitted sheet, flat sheet, coverlet, duvet, and duvet insert. Each layer is cleaned weekly except the duvet and duvet cover, which are cleaned three times a year. The iRobot is on, but it's running in the hallway vacuuming the catwalk. We do have it programmed to come in here, but again, I like using the Dyson to assist. Also, I always remove the bean bags and fluff them before vacuuming under its intended space. the shoe shelves of my son's closet. It seems to be the only area within the closet besides the floors that I need to clean every month. I 
I'm back from Walmart and want to give you guys a quick grocery haul. I didn't make it to Sam's today because I had to pick my son up from school. I'm also going to show you guys how I store everything, so please continue watching. I was low on brown sugar and milk chocolate chips that I used in my oatmeal, so I purchased some of those. These are the black gloves I was telling you guys about earlier. This is the cheaper brand. You can purchase them for $9.48 at Walmart. I was completely out of chicken broth, so I purchased three of those. And the snack drawer was running low, so I wanted to grab some of these coffee cakes. I also purchased donuts and nutty butters, and I wanted to give this waffle crisp cereal a try. Hubby and I was low on our aloe vera scented hand soap and Palmer's cocoa butter lotion and the boys were low on their lavender vanilla scented poopery and I needed to resupply the kick in soy sauce. I want to try this rug tape on the cork cover that is located in the office. We were low on the Glade refills and I want to test out this pop-up light in our back coat closet. I needed to replace my electric toothbrush and we were completely out of AA and AAA batteries. We were out of these hash brown patties and flavored lemon juices. The boys like the raspberry, strawberry, and blueberry flavor, and I like the plain and mango flavored lemonades. We were low on eggs, and I was low on my caramel macchiato coffee cream. I needed to resupply my Cheetos popcorn because apparently the boys have been eating my stash, so I had to purchase three bags today. They were out of my nature's own wheat bread, so I purchased the Sara Lee brand instead, and our chip drawer was running low, so I purchased this to refill it. Let's store these groceries away, starting with our cold items. Next up is our chip and bread drawers. the brown sugar milk chocolate chips and cereal in this cabinet so let's fill or refill the containers This is my first time purchasing the Waffle Crisp cereal. So we're gonna store it in these overflow containers which are usually reserved for our regular purchase of Cheerios and Cinnamon Toast Crunch. We're now moving on to the snack drawer. It's not completely empty as it's been a week since I last filled it, but I like to keep it stocked nevertheless. This is where I store the chicken broth and I keep our soy sauce refrigerated. I removed the gloves from the boxes and store them in these Ziploc storage bags. This conserves space and makes it easier to see when we're running low. These items are not stored in the kitchen but in other rooms of our home. 
So I'm going to carry them to the rooms and show you how I store them starting in our bathroom. this battery organizer from Amazon years ago and they still sell it on their site. It stores 93 batteries of various sizes and includes a removable battery tester and a protective lid. lights to this back coat closet so I purchased these battery operated LED push lights. I was surprised at how well they lit up this closet. I'm also going to use rug tape to secure this cord protector. I'll let you know how well it does. this far in the video I want to thank you for watching Sissy Spaces and if you enjoyed today's video please remember to hit that like and subscribe button and share this channel with your family and friends. Again thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.